Hey everyone, it's Friday, March 24th. It is time for another code side assistance call. Uh, this is uh, for clients that aligned online, uh, an opportunity to have a group support call where they can come on and ask any questions about uh, whatever they're working on uh, in Squarespace or WordPress or lead pages, uh, MailChimp, uh, what have you. I know a couple of things uh, uh, are coming on today. People are coming on with a few questions. Um, I'm dealing with uh, creating a landing page that has a video replay um, and how to do that for uh, Eliza Jane Schneider at dialectmasterclass.com and uh, Larry Nemechek from portal47.net and LarryNemechek.com has a question I know about Akismet and spam filtering for comments and Marianne Udell um, of uh, YourSheltering.com uh, had a question about logo placements on uh, in lead play, in lead pages, so hopefully we'll have those people um, joining us. Uh, for now, I'm going to share my screen. So um, this is uh, in Vimeo. I'm going to since I've been working on this, I'm going to go ahead and start here. Vimeo is a like YouTube. It's a place to put videos, but unlike YouTube, uh, there's a little more control about how they get shared and. Uh, you can keep some things private and um, have them embed only in uh, certain places. So um, for here, we've logged in and we are going to take a look at a video that was, um, that's was that been uploading and processing. Let's see if it's ready um, now. So we're going to go to um, uh, manage videos. This is a, a new video, so let's see if this is ready. Yeah, I think this uh, this is pretty good. Um, so here we're going to go and um, take a look at these settings. This is where you can change things so that uh, the privacy is affected. So um, I've already put in the tags, uh, changed the content radio rating. Um, it's randomly selected this thumbnail. Uh, you know, we could go in here and do another one. Um, but uh, I think. Hey, Marianne, how are you? Okay, I'm having problems on getting my the uh, actual computer thing launched. So, huh. oh, the Zoom? Are you not able to launch yeah. the Zoom? Okay. Yeah. Did you want to ask your question over the phone, and I can try to answer it? You know, when and you can look at it when we're done. But if you can't okay. if you can't see your screen, then it's hard for me to talk you through or ask. You know, I know. You, we're here for forty minutes, so if you want to call me back or or try to get online with the link, um, that's probably the okay. Way. I, I'll I'll try from a different uh, computer. Okay, real quick, what was your question? You you sent me an email about uh, logo placement right. and lead pages. Yes, um, I had created a lead page for the. Uh, retreat that I'm doing with Daniela and um, Melissa gave me some feedback I think she viewed it from her phone and she said that the logo showed up so large it took up the whole screen and she said shouldn't it be at the end uh, so uh, I so don't know the, the sheltering tree logo is is too big is that the question the concern well, it's that and whether it should be at the end of the of the lead page rather than at the top. I know it's at the at the end as well, but I didn't know um, if there was a protocol for that. Or, yeah, I mean, um, it, it really depends on what you're trying to do. You know, the whole purpose of a lead page is to focus people's attention. So we, we, we narrow their focus into one decision that they need to make, which is to hit the button to say yes. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, you know, you have to judge what things will be distracting for that. And if, you know, it, your branding is always important, you want it consistently branding, but it could go on the end and that, that doesn't affect anything as long as it's branded. The mm -hmm. more important thing is that they have that, like they land on the page and they're instantly able to, you know, not have to scroll past a giant logo to get to the button that says, yes, I'm in. So um, right. take a look. Um, I can log into your lead pages account and take a look at that page. Um, but why don't you try me when you're able to um, when you're able to uh, try try the other computer and see if we can look at it together. And I see Larry might be here. Yes. That, hey, Larry. Hi. You can um, go ahead and answer his question. I'll put myself on mute. 
Okay, well, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. So what I was uh, quickly showing, and so I can finish this up for people, um, I just wanted to show people the back end of Vimeo, the basics of oh. making a video private. So this is uh, a video that we want to have only available to us uh, with a, either with a private link, uh -huh. so so that you know you can give it out to people if they if you want. In this case, this is a replay of a webinar, and we're actually going to only have it be available. Uh, on this uh, site. So what we want to do is uh, we want to put the domain of, this is the lead pages domain here, so that it can show up on this uh, lead page, but not anywhere else. So nobody can embed it in, you know, another website. Right. So, but, so you're embedding it, but you're embedding it with the ability not to be uh, copied. Right. So the idea is, well, you know, anyone who is <laughs> even pretty much any 16 year old could probably figure out it. You know, there's <laughs> software to, to download videos that you don't intend to copy. So, you know, it's, there are ways to get uh, videos that you, you know, people prefer you not to get. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. Uh, but you don't, you know, but you want to def you want to deter people and you want to make it easier for them to get, you know, to do the right thing. So this is where we're changing the domain here. Um, uh, we're not having comments. Uh, people cannot download the video, so we want to change that. And then we hit save. And then over here on the embed code, uh, Vimeo has a nice feature where you can change a little bit of the options here for the embed code. So for example, uh, you want to have the full screen button and the play bar and the volume control, but we're and we're going to show the title, but we're going to hide the little picture, and we're going to hide other information. So, so it gets very yeah. stripped down. And when it's done, we're just going to go back to the beginning of the video. And that's it. So what we do here is we go up to your get to, to get embed code, and we just copy this embed code. And uh, I'm working on a – actually, I think it's already up here. Uh, on a lead page here. So let me go back into lead pages and I will um, finish what I'm doing here. And then I will show you guys, uh, answer your question, Larry, and ma hopefully Marianne will join us. And uh, this is the webinar replay page. So this has been set up to, uh, with a, counter with a timer and the idea here is that we're going to have the webinar available for limited time right so we're branding up here we have a link to a page that has a whole sales pitch for the program and this is the timer so we've set this timer here to actually she wants it for the next three days so today's the 24th one two three so the 27th will be done and this is nice in lead pages because you have the ability to um, show or hide sections based on the timer. So darn too late sh gets shown and webinar replay hides after three days. So that's the idea. And then we just want to make sure this um, embed code for this video is correct. So we're going to paste in that thing that I just copied from Vimeo. There, save, <laughs> update. So um, I don't know, for everyone, you know, who's doing webinars, this is a really nice way to, um, you know, in general, people who have the option, replays for webinars are a little contentious. Um, a lot of people suggest that if people have an out not to go watch your webinar, like, oh, there'll be a replay that'll, that'll increases their ability to say, yeah, I'll do it, I'll watch the replay, and then they never do. So I don't recommend saying, yeah, there'll be a replay afterwards. In fact, I would recommend saying we're not going to have a replay ahead of time. And then afterwards you go, you know what? You missed it. But hey, guess what? We're going to have a replay for three days only. And then um, – um, so, uh, you know, so they got something they weren't expecting. So that's a nice bonus. So here I'm just going to quickly show this page. So we have this limited time replay. Here's the video. Here's the offer. 
And it's just a quick, you know, hey, if you, you know, see the video, you have a way to, to get the offer right away. If you want to learn more, um, there's a full page that has lots of, you know, information about what you get. So that's where we're going to end for Eliza. Larry, let's talk about you. What, what's going on? I had, well, I sent a couple of um, actual questions uh, that were WordPress related. All right, let's get into your site. Uh, and hopefully fairly simple things. One was I actually uh, wanted to see, I, I think, I, I know we did this to start with, but I wanted to see where you uh, actually put uh, keywords in or meta links or whatever you call them, you know, SEO words. Um, so and, again, uh, yeah, and then the other, well, I'll, I'll remember the other one, but it was, they were both were, uh, WordPress related. Well, you, uh, you emailed me that uh, you were still getting spam even though you've signed that up for it. Akismet. Yes, that was or the other one. Akismet. I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. I should know how to pronounce that. I'm a pro. Akismet. I'm going to say Akismet. Cause Kismet. Because it should be off of Kismet. So yeah. I don't, I don't think it's Akismet. I think it's Akismet. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so first, first things first. So, so actually, uh, you know, we haven't done this for you, and maybe this is a good, a good opportunity to do this. So um, there's a plugin I like to install for people called Yoast SEO. Okay. And um, so if we go ahead and search for Yoast here. What prompted um, I, this was, I don't know why, but I just, uh, everybody would always put in Star Trek expert on Google, and I yeah. would come up, and then I noticed yesterday, I hadn't thought about it in a billion years, and I did, and I'm not on the lead page, any, on the front page of Google anymore, so I wondered what happened, so I decided I must be getting lazy, anyway. Um, actually, I had already installed Yoast SEO, we hadn't turned it on. I don't typically like to... Um, start with SEO because it, it, you know, the more important thing for most people is to get their content correct and their message right and, you know, target it to the right people. SEO is great, but it's a, but it's a moving target. And what we want to do is sort of cover the basics. So the SEO plugin like Yoast is a good way to cover those basics. So we're going to go to that. We've just activated it. And so here it's, you saying, so you're saying there's no native place in WordPress to do you know, I don't, I don't think so. I think you either have to have it be um, a plug-in okay. or it's built into the theme. I haven't seen it native to WordPress. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, well, I, know you know, I, I could totally yeah. be wrong. I hope, if somebody let me know if I'm wrong, because that would be a good thing to know. I know well, that SEO is going down in importance compared to everything else, but it's still there. And I just, anyway, I, just, I was just thinking about it. Well, so. we, the, here's, here's the thing about SEO. So the, there's a, there's a sort of hierarchy of what Google is looking for. They're looking for the title of a page. And if there's – the most important thing is they want to see that people are accessing this content. So they want to see that people are linking to it. So the sort of white hat way to uh, achieve search engine optimization is to do more to get people to share your content and share wow. links to your site. So more on Facebook. that To drive traffic from Facebook or wherever else you're marketing – to your website so that so that the search engines see, ah, people are coming to this website. This it's got relevant content. I'm gonna, you know, rank it a little higher. Um, so that said, uh, the things that the SEO plugin does is it helps you. It just sort of keeps you aware of what's gonna what's gonna be useful to you in in making those titles and things. So we're gonna go through this uh, configuration wizard here. Uh, this is a production site. It's a blog. Okay. Trekland, or you could say Treklands Portal 47. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if a comma would give you two separate. Um, no, you only have the, you know, the name of the company. So basically by putting both of these things in here. Okay, one will get know, it. In fact, if we put Larry Nemechek <laughs> in there, we get we get multiple things here. So company, good, good, good. name, settings. Um, so we would come back here. We're not going to take. We only have forty minutes, so we'll we'll come back and add these. But we need to add your social profiles. Okay. And this helps. Um, uh, this lets us know if we want to. Um, events are going to be visible. Aggregator records are hidden portfolio we're not really using but we'll leave it visible for now uh, you don't really have multiple authors it's just you 
So this Google search is where we need to, we need to kind of hook into your Google uh, account. And I don't want to do this on the, on the call because I don't want to, I'd have to get your passwords and stuff. So uh, when we're done here, we'll, we'll come back here and, and set this up to hook to your, um, you have a Google account, right? You have a YouTube channel. Right. Right. So, uh, and we'll, we'll get that code and we'll authenticate it. Um, so Trekland. So when uh, they say, yeah, I mean, the URL is, is still Larry but Right, but the, the website name is Trekland. This, this is the, if whatever you put here. I was gonna say, what is the, what's the significance of this? What are we doing? Well, here? this is, this might be too much here. So the idea here is whatever you put here is prepended to all of your page titles. So when they go to events, it'll be uh, Trekland with Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek.com, you know, blah, 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 hyphen event, you know, events. So this is probably too much here. This will be what shows up in the browser bar, the URL bar? Yeah, the UR, and not the URL, well, in the title of the window itself, which nobody can see. Like, look at this title, SEO configuration, uh -huh. <laughs> so, so, I mean, actually, oh. it's not that important because people don't actually see these, but it's, but it's useful for search engines to, to okay. be able to, you know, okay. so. So you might, you know, Trekland, this might be too much. Like, it might be for the purposes of your page naming. We just go with Trekland. And then have okay. the title things. I, I'm but, following. But that's you. a <laughs> that's a decision you can make later. So then there's uh, the newsletter again. So that was the basics of the thing. And so now what happens is when we create a page or you know a post. So we let's go to all of your posts. Um, let's see. This is a recent one. Did you talk to Athena? Uh, yeah, do you know her? Uh, I know her. I mean, I, I know her because I was a teenager in the you know eighties. <laughs> so, so. uh, yeah. But yes. Okay. No, I. She was one I did at a Hollywood at a signing show one time. There, her agent is on me to interview his people. They have Trek connections. So. So here uh, now we have this this Yoast SEO. And you can do a little. You can add a little like keywords and stuff for the like it for it to to um, evaluate whether you've got the right wording in here right so the, the focus so are they keyword, saying focus keyword for meta tag or whatever is that um, this is to help you title it right so in other words um, it this is a place where you could add a facebook title and description there's a certain there's a special uh, thing called open graph that facebook uses to grab things. So if you're sharing a post, uh, a link to a post on Facebook, you know, it, it grabs these things. You know, you could have its own image and stuff here. Um, I keep saying, um, but let's stop that. Wow. Uh, and then these are all so advanced. You don't need to worry about them, but basically you want to look at, it, it's giving you a quick analysis. Like you, you know, Maybe you could improve this by having a subheading to give you more. In other words, uh, when, a, when a bot is looking at a page, it first it's looking for things that are titled uh, headings, right? So H1, H2. So heading is, and a subhead are these H1 and H2, H3 tags. And it, and it gives those more importance. So one of the tricks is if you are in here, uh, you know, your title of your of your page here is the most important thing. But if you wanted to juice something up, you could add a little subhead in here, right? Trekland talks with Athena Massey as a, head, a subhead. And this is purely about SEO. This isn't about anything yeah, else. Yeah. I mean, it's just a way to kind of juice this. It's okay. in my opinion, and this is my opinion, not, you know, people who make their living selling SEO services don't agree. Um, you know, I think your time is better spent creating more content that's that engages people and gets more traffic to your site that way than worrying about coming in here and futzing with that subheadings and, and tags and stuff. If that um, sounds like that's more advice for people whose blogs and content is about uh, shopping for diet lemon weight reduction bars. Well, yeah, you always, I mean, you, here's the thing, like Larry, you have to always think about from the standpoint of someone sitting down on their computer and typing something into Google, what are they going to be searching for? So Star Trek, you know, obviously is something they might be searching for. But uh, as I said, I, my focus is generally 
on let's get more good content out and driving people to our website from Facebook that way. Uh, then let's worry about people searching on a, you know, in a search box for something and, and somehow coming up with us. That said, you know, Star Trek expert, how, who's going to search on that? People that are wanting to, they, they need to talk to somebody or they want to hire somebody or they want to whatever. So, yeah. yeah. So that is, it's not, you're not showing up there. Well, um, I always so where you did before. So we, we should look at that. The image search here a couple of times. I just said limit check. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're not. You still come up as, as limit check. So. Well, that's interesting. Well, see, they're uh, looking for my name. They've got me, but, uh, oh, this will be fun. Okay. Bang. I, I come out ahead of McCoy. Um, that's pretty good. Yeah, but generic, people who are having an event or they, they have no clue or reporters or whatever that want to that wanna find me, that's what I was looking at. Right. I'm an expert, but that's what people say. So, so, um, so where does it go? How do we do it then? Well, let's um, – we're going to need to go in there and, and change some of those settings. We only have a little bit more time, though, so I want to make sure I get to Marianne. Uh, Larry, I, let me follow up with you about that afterwards. Is that okay? Okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, hi, Marianne. Were you able to get um, hi. on a computer? I can, I can see you. Okay. <laughs> you can see me? I mean, my screen, I hope. I'm sharing my screen. Yes, I can see your screen. I can see the screen. Okay. And who is 818-903-6244? That's, That's you. Yes. I, I oh, you're on both on ways. Phone. Got it. Okay, just checking. All right, so yeah, we're going to log in. Audio this way. Uh, we're going to do a quick, whoops, resume share. We're going to do a quick uh, look at what page you're talking about here. So let okay. me, uh, I have to, so helpful. They want to log you in as the last person you were. Uh, and if you're helping other people, it, <laughs> it's like, okay, I have to log out again. All right, so Marianne, we're logging in as you. Um, this is a super helpful. If you're on a Mac, I think Windows 2, this is a nice plugin called 1Password. And uh, it lets you store people's, you know, different logins for your different sites and stuff in under one place. And then, um, so this is the Reclaim, Reclaim Your Life. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah. So one of the tricks about the drag and drop builder in lead pages is that there's these spacers that you can put in and you can also adjust mm -hmm. the um, width of uh, the, sp the um, logo, uh, the width of uh, the, the, the padding on this row. So you've done a pretty ah. good job here. So you've got shelter and tree. Um, this is a problem here because um, what I would say is you, she would be better. She? Yes. Sim, Simisol would be better off having an integrated logo that has all of this in it because what happens, uh, let me go ahead and preview this. You know, what happens is. I had a hard is, time because she didn't have it that way. Is that, you know, this is what uh, happens. So Simisol Consulting is a little text thing that shows up, you know, that uh -huh. way. Because uh, it's not integrated, and on an iPad, you, know, you can see this problem. Okay, my God, yeah. this is not this is not what we want. So we're going to exit the preview, and we're going to fix this a couple of different ways um, in eight minutes, <laughs> seven minutes. Okay. So, so um, I'm not going to change. What I will do is after we're done, what I would do is come in here and, and quickly add Simisol Consulting into this logo so that we have two logos. Um, and, all right, so, so what we're trying to do, since we're gonna do that, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that section so these two will eventually be two logos. And we're gonna add, um, we're gonna add uh, spacing over here. Okay, wait a minute. This is, sorry. Interesting. I'm, I'm, 
one of the nice the drag and drop builder is very um, uh, flexible, but uh, one of the problems is it's sometimes not clear. Like, okay, here's row one. There's two columns, right? So there's a left. There's a left. There's a left column here, and that you know we can control the padding and stuff on. Oh. You know, and there's a right column mm -hmm. that we can also control the padding and stuff on. So oh. sometimes you have to come in here and like futz around with this stuff. So we have two columns, and in this column, we've added a spacer on the on the right, the left. Sorry, that's so big. So we're going to match it over here so that these get you know, vaguely the same. Um, so this is weird. So this is, why is column one? We, we need this column to be in the middle. So we're going to go back here. So we're here in this top section. So let me just double check. The top section, yeah, OK. Everything in this top section in row one is, is skewed because our two, our two sections are different sizes, our two columns, rather. Oh. So one of the things we need to do here is go into somehow. <laughs> um, go and adjust this column so that it's not, how am I gonna do this? Come on, uh, hang on, I'm gonna update. When I added the logo, that may have screwed things up because I was working, I just um, went into an existing lead page and edited to uh, suit what I needed for this. No, see, I just, this somehow, you know, and this might've been how I set it up too. So I just want to have these these be two things. Now, that said, what we probably could do. Um, so one of the quick solutions is that we create. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to create a separate section that's logos. So this is the top section, right? That's the website home in Marianne. Uh -huh. But if we create a second section, so we add a section, and we're going to call it logos. Ah. And this gives us a little more flexibility. So I'm going to move this all the way up. So we have this top section, and we have logos. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, Uh, let's go ahead and add two columns for the for the for the logos. Oh, you know what? This isn't going to work for us. Shoot. So I was thinking. Here, I'm thinking out loud now. Uh, what I was thinking was is, uh, and I'm running out of time. Uh, that. Uh, one of the things you can do is if you have a separate section, uh, so if we had a section that was just for logos, uh, we have a little bit of flexibility because we can tell it, you know what, don't show this section. Uh, see timing control device display down here? Uh -huh. We can uh -huh. say hide this section on the tablet and on mobile, but show it on the desktop. Ah. So the idea is we can put our logos here. We can, you know, have the uh, have our cake and eat it too a little bit. Um, so I would say, you know, move this logo down, you know, here, and we're gonna we're gonna adjust these because we're gonna have different um, things, and then we're gonna move the logos all the way to the top. So email Marianne website home that all that stays. Mm -hmm. But we're going to move um, this section back over here to the top. And then we're going to add some spacing 
so that these get small. And there's another trick I'm gonna show you really quick because we only have a minute. Mm -hmm. um, uh, now with the drag and drop builder, um, so, sorry, page layout. I lost my, I lost my widgets. Uh, with the drag and drop builder, we have the ability to um, also um, add a little so we have these logos here uh, add uh, add code to tell this image so in this section called logos um, we can we can actually come in here to styles and go all the way to the bottom here sorry bottom here and add arbitrary custom CSS and one of the things we could do there is we could, and I won't have time to do this now, but we could add a thing to, to target those images and say, let's make sure these have a maximum width of a certain amount. Ah. And then they won't get any bigger than 200 pixels wide. Even if they're on a phone, they'll be centered with 200 pixels wide. Um, so I'll show you that. I'll, I'll go ahead and look at that later. We also have to find the other logo that has the word sheltering tree um, in green right. underneath. To deal with that, um, but I'm going to run out of time here. Uh, I've got about three minutes. Is there is there any other question I can add to three minutes from now? Before three minutes, <laughs> I guess not. I don't think we um, get back to the akiz ac at the akismet. Uh. Oh, akismet. Yeah, let's take a quick look at that. So, um, Trekland. I'm sorry, Larry Nemechek. Uh, here we go. So I did a little quick research, Larry, and apparently your your problem is not uncommon. So let me just double check. You are you are um, paying because they're for the Akismet. Akismet uh, okay. And like I said, I checked in a week ago or so, and uh, or I was getting started getting the notices again, and right. they're all spam comments. And I killed out probably twenty of them, but I left a couple there. Just to see. So Akismet has protected your site from 378 spam comments. There are 85 comments in your spam queue right now. Okay. So, it's, yeah. So you would go questions. here. Yeah. And basically, it's all crap. It's all crap, oh, right? Oh, it is. Yeah. 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 So, so Akismet is doing its job. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. And I'm not even getting like Anafort style wages. <laughs> You're getting um, Russian. It looks like Russian hackers. Yeah. Exactly. So there's two ways pe people can hack uh, your uh, spam, you can spam your comments. And one of them is by robotic, you know, robots, uh, in which case there are some other plugins that can help with that because they, they, um, they do some tricks to um, fool the robots. <laughs> and then there's low paid Russian wage earners who, you know, hand pick a target and come in here and add messages. And there's not really a whole lot you can do about that. So it, it really depends. Um, but that said, there are some other... Um, well, is Akismet doing something? Oh, yeah. No, it blocked 385 comments. But if you search for uh, Kismet not blocking all spam, you'll get, um, you'll get some other, uh, other options, right? And uh -huh. you'll get other people saying, hey, what are some other options? So... Um, Kismet is really the number one choice, and they do a pretty good job. Uh, I have heard, you know, um, WP Spam Shield, Anti Spam. You can do both of these things. So you can add another plugin, you know, and see if that helps you, essentially. So okay. we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, I do have to pause. Uh, I have to wrap up this call because I'm, I'm, I'm hard, I'm a hard out at 40 minutes for these. Uh, but I will go ahead and uh, we'll activate it. We'll find another option for that and see okay. uh, how it goes. And we'll report back next week. How's that sound? Okay. Uh, right. And it's not, a, it's not an either or. It's a pilot on. Yeah, you can do both. Right. You don't want to stop doing a Kismet because, it, you know, it did stop 384 spam comments. So okay. it's doing something. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop my screen. Um, and I'm going to be me. I'm not sure, if, I'm not sure how this works. Um, you got to be you. I got to be me. Uh, thanks, everyone. And uh, we'll be back next week, Friday. Uh, we'll report back on Larry's spam fighting progress.